Rupert Murdoch's remarkable career over seven decades in business is unmatched. Peter Stefanovic has this report. He was born into the industry in Melbourne in 1931, the son of Elizabeth and Sir Keith Murdoch, a war correspondent turned newspaper tycoon. When Sir Keith died in 1952, 21-year-old Rupert returned home from Oxford to take charge of News Limited, the family business. It was facing financial problems with just one key asset, an Adelaide afternoon daily, the news. Rupert Murdoch's influence grew and grew in the years that followed as he acquired suburban and regional newspapers across the country. Then, in 1964, he took a huge risk by launching the first national general publication, The Australian, a dream of his father's that Sir Keith never lived to see. It was a huge financial and logistical undertaking in its day. Murdoch became known for his hands-on approach. Get very involved in, in the newspapers themselves and in sometimes uh, in public arguments that we're conducting or involved in. But, uh, on the other hand, I think that I give my editors uh, tremendous freedom. That style brought success in Australia and a financial springboard to expand abroad. In 1968, Rupert Murdoch purchased salacious British tabloid The News of the World and then, a year later, The Sun. I'm rather sick of snobs who tell us that they're bad papers. In 1981, Murdoch acquired The Times and Sunday Times, the newspaper of choice for the British establishment. The BBC was so concerned by the move that they commissioned a two-part series scrutinising his business methods. Mr Murdoch, we've called this programme Who's Afraid of Rupert Murdoch? And it seems that many people are afraid, principally because they can't believe that you won't interfere and alter the character of the newspapers you've bought, the Sunday Times and the Times. What do you say to that? Well, I certainly didn't buy them to change them. In 1986, Rupert Murdoch went to war with the powerful British print unions whose militant industrial action frequently brought newspaper production to a standstill. He announced that printing operations for his publications would be moved from Fleet Street to a modern new plant in the East London suburb of Wapping with computerised production methods. The union saw their power being threatened and took 6,000 workers out on strike. He responded by dismissing them all. In what became known as the Battle of Wapping, there were street clashes that spanned 54 weeks. Print unions picketed outside the new plant. Hundreds of demonstrators and policemen have been injured as each Saturday the streets around the plant are turned into a battleground. But the papers went to print every single day. Within a few years, all of Murdoch's publications were de-unionised and ultimately he's been credited with saving the newspaper industry in the UK. Rupert Murdoch hadn't removed himself from the Australian political arena meantime. His newspapers endorsed Labor's Gough Whitlam in the 1972 election. Bob Hawke and Labor's economic reformist agenda receiving backing in the 1980s. And in 1987, Murdoch acquired the Herald and Weekly Times, taking control of the company that his father had been chairman of and helped build into a publishing powerhouse. Back in the UK, Rupert Murdoch launched himself into the TV industry in 1989 as Sky Television was launched to take on the duopoly of ITV and the BBC. The success of the company was cemented in 1992 with a groundbreaking deal to broadcast the new 20-team English Premier League football competition that replaced the existing English First Division. Murdoch's so-called war on elitism had also expanded to the United States. He'd purchased the New York Post in 1976 before shifting rapidly into the film and TV industry after becoming a naturalised US citizen 
to get around American ownership laws. News Corporation purchased 20th Century Fox, Fox Sports and Fox Broadcasting. Fox Sports became a huge power after launch in 1994, driven by NFL rights. The launch of Fox News followed in 1996. It became and remains an influential voice in US politics. In the same year, Sky News Australia was launched. You're watching Sky News Australia. Good evening and welcome to a new era in Australian television, the first 24-hour news and current affairs channel. News Corp became a full owner of Sky News Australia in 2016. News Corp's footprint remains over major Australian print and online publications, including the Daily Telegraph and Herald Sun, along with Foxtel and Fox Sports. The Australian and Courier Mail have also become dominant publications in the Australian media industry. Ever the dealmaker, Rupert Murdoch left one of the biggest until late in his career. In 2017, aged 86, he reshaped his media empire with the $100 billion sale of 21st Century Fox to Disney. Murdoch was instrumental in defying other media and refusing to give content away for free online. He pioneered the digital newspaper subscription model before taking on the big tech companies. And now, a new chapter in his illustrious career spanning seven decades. Rupert Murdoch will transition to the role of Chairman Emeritus. His eldest son, Lachlan, who's been leading the business alongside his father for years, will become sole chairman of News Corp and Fox Corporation. Peter Stefanovic, Sky News.